Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and the first episode of my new Rogue Tech series, The Battle for Astrakhazy. Now, um, what we're going to do with this series, it's a non-canon series again. I mean, it's, it is kind of, but it, it, is, it isn't. Um, what this series is going to be about is a Smoke Jaguar unit um, that has uh, basically mutinied and left the smoke jaguars um, after the jaguars defeat in Caridan space uh, they lose their con they're going to they're be going back to the home rules to choose a new con and the uh, smoke jaguars are actually collapsing at this point as a clan very shortly they'll cease to exist but just before that happened um, this uh, group of scientists um, merchants uh, supply echelon um, rear end uh, freeborn and uh, a unit of uh, Karita bondsmen had basically been treated like dirt uh, been blamed for a lot of uh, Jaguars failures uh, the commander um, who has uh, is actually a true born warrior who's sort of fallen out of favor has been demoted and put in command of this uh, freeborn unit um, and you know tired of the failures being blamed for the reason why they're doing so poorly uh, this group has sort of in secret decided to mutiny and leave clan space so that's what they've done uh, they've headed to a planet called Astrakhazy now this planet is rumored to have uh, Star League uh, cash uh, located on it from the reunica reunification war um, so they've gone there in hopes of uh, finding that and being able to establish themselves at least someplace uh, and create a place that they can call, call home. So that's what they've done. Uh, we've got two main lances of units. We've got a lance, um, our star of clan units, five mechs, and we've got um, a unit of Karita bondsmen, one lance of four mechs, and two vehicles. And uh, that's what we're going to be running with the series. Now, the entire series is going to be taking place in the Astrakhazy system. Uh, it's more of a role play series. Um, I mean, we're technically, technically not going to be staying in that, uh, on that system. Like the individual games that are running side by side, the creating game and the clan game running side by side, we'll be traveling to different planets, but we're going to say that they're all all those like the the locations are all located in the Astrakhazy system and later on I'm going to take you to Astrometrics and I'll show you how we're going to do that but basically the entire series is going to be played out in, on in Astrakhazy uh, in the Astrakhazy system we're going to be facing a lot of different opponents a lot of different types of opponents um, as the battle begins to develop and things get more and more heated and more people get involved and things like that so that's kind of the storyline, uh, loose storyline at the very beginning. Um, I'm going to take you through, before we start the actual uh, gameplay, I want to take you through the settings that I used for Rogue Tech. I'll take you this, through the settings that I'm, I've used for the individual games, like how we set them up, amount of salvage, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll take you through the two lances so you can see where the lances, uh, how the lances are set up. And then we'll go right to Astrometrics and I'll show you what the system looks like and all that and then we'll get into um, a, uh, a quick mission I think today before we end this episode uh, just so you can get a feel for how the lances are being played out all right so uh, without further ado let's get into the settings all right so let's talk Rogue Tech configuration here so here's what I did with the configuration to be able to run this series so we're gonna keep uh, random spawns on um, that way uh, it will um, randomize spawn locations of enemies and stuff like that. I believe that's what this does. Um, and then battle deployments. We're going to go with manual deploy. We want to be able to deploy where we want to go to. Um, and then we want to do uh, manual convoys, which is a new setting. Uh, allows you to manually control convoys, which is awesome. Um, Map size, we're going to keep at 33%. I do like the little, a little larger map, giving us the little bit ability to move around a little bit more. Uh, so that's what I'm going with that. We're going to disable the allies, because in this case, we're not going to have any support. Um, it's also going to... <laughs> um, 
on any tougher contracts, it's also going to mean that we have tougher uh, opponents, but that's fine. We're okay with that. Uh, uh, combat log, we're going to leave it as floaties only. Um, pilot randomizer, I uh, used uh, random generated starting pilots. Uh, they're not using the running run pilots. This way I don't have to buy pilots to start with. We just get a random group of uh, um, average pilots, which I prefer. I prefer starting at a lower level. Um, just makes things a little more difficult, a little more realistic, I find. Uh, also gives you less of an advantage. So if you're good at playing the game, I'm not really that great at playing the game. I'm very familiar with it. So it's easy. I mean, not easier, but it's this kind of gives you a little bit more of a challenge at the very beginning. Pilots gain, like I've got, the, the you'll see it anyway, the pilot's uh, skill um, develops XP really slowly, but early on you get enough points to, to get your guys up to a half decent level pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry too much about that, but that's where I kind of start. Uh, urban urban biomes are going to end up being war-torn nightmares. I kind of prefer that. Um, I do have all three of the... Uh, um, all three of the modules, so we're going to leave those on. I'm going to go with uh, Civil War Area 3062 to uh, 3067 b units uh, because um, this is the, kind of the era that we're we're fighting in, a little after 3062. So I'm going to leave these on. I could go with this, but um, it's the Jihad era. The Battle of Astrakhazi will be over before that, so I'm not going to go with more advanced units. I'm just going to kind of go with with the Civil War era units. So we'll go this route. Um, Optional mods and components. Uh, many of them are non-canon. Obviously, the uh, non-2C units uh, or non-canon 2C units, uh, clan units. Uh, I leave that on because I, I like the 2C units. Uh, looted clan mechs allows uh, pirates to be taking on, you know, goofy uh, clan ass mechs and things like that. Apocalypse, of course. We want to have more trash cans because I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy Irby loadouts. I just that's just the way I like. Uh, Custom Omni Max is going to be on. Um, uh, pyrotech units, yes. We're going to leave the elite pilots and mechs off. Um, I don't think we're going to, like, later on in the game, if we want to turn this on, we can put it back, we can turn it on, but right now we're going to leave it off. Um, it'll just, um, free up some contracts and stuff so that we're not, we don't get contracts for these, these guys early on. It'll give us the get ability to have normal contracts as opposed to these. Um, Black Ops R&D, the Rogue Society, Super Heavies, Nuclear Weapon Carriers, and Experimental Weapons. We're just going to leave all these off for now. We're not, we don't really need them on for this. Um, additional flash points and stories. I turn them all on uh, because they're all, I, I mean, it's, there's the option um, to do these flash points. I don't know if we'll ever get around to doing them. Um, because of how we're going to be jumping through systems, like system to system, unless we find a flash point that's relevant to the storyline we might not be taking any of these so we'll just leave them for now i'm leaving them on because it gives us the option and it doesn't hurt anything so it doesn't affect the, the gameplay in any way um pilots of the modern community team i turned on omega squad pilots are left off emblems i turned all of them on because i like checking them all out to see what emblems we're going to be end up like ended up using civilians evacuated cities the only cities I mean, I'll be explaining this a little later on. The only cities that are actually in the game are already ab abandoned. Um, so any city that we fight, there's no ci there's no civilians in it. They're just abandoned cities. So we've got that uh, turned on to here. Uh, we we're using the updated fire effects. I, I don't I don't I mean either of them are okay. Um, I'll just leave the updated ones on. Uh, Fog of War uh, is on by unit basis. Um, so each unit will have its own fog of war uh, based on what the unit can see as opposed to fog of war staying revealed for everybody I think this is a little more realistic so we'll go that route um, invasion in, uh, enable night vision uh, overlay will include that um, speed mod 50% increase in speed just speeds up the game slightly um, skip intro uh, use most four keys ex as the escape key sure uh, I left the uh, debugger off. Uh, anything else down here? No sorting of the mechs so we can uh, put them in the uh, mech bay however we see fit. Um, FX uh, commander portrait loader. Yeah. Uh, Biotech sound replacement pack. Yep. Um, skip travel cutscenes. Saves a lot of time. That was huge. Um, 
when I was bringing my clan unit into the inner sphere for the start of the game. Um, and I'll explain that a little later. Uh, crystal clear, uh, reducing post posture. The rest of this stuff is just pretty much uh, basic stuff. Uh, uh, default Rotec mech portraits, yes. Um, now free armor repair after battle. So I'm going to include this and here's the reason why. Um, so the repair armor after battle, it's basically you either repair the entire mech or you don't. And it's going to cost you to repair the entire mech. Free armor repair after battle, what happens is, it's like battle tech where at the end of the battle is over, you come back, all the armor is instantly replaced, and then you have to go in and fix individual mechs one at a time. So this way will allow us to do kind of back-to-back -back fighting, making it look like our unit's been hasn't been removed from combat but we're continuing the fight on so any internal damage never gets repaired uh, so we just basically continue the fight that it's going to save sea bills this like sea bills aren't going to be a major issue in this we're not going to be focusing on trying to stay afloat um, so how we say however we save sea bills is better because it just basically you know I don't want to have our the success or failure of this uh, battle to be based on sea bills. It's going to be based on whether we win or lose in fights. So I, that's part of the reason why I went this way. Uh, Multi-thread rendering, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I think I think we're fine as far as performance goes. So that's going to be our configuration layout. And uh, yeah, all right, guys. So here, let's have a look at the game difficulty settings of what I got set up for the game here. So both of the uh, um, different games that I've got running here uh, will be the exact same settings. So uh, parts for mech assembly will be three. Uh, the reason why I did that is uh, I want to make it easy to pick up a mech. Um, so for instance if we're in a battle we take a mech's head off or whatever we can easily pick up a mech um, to add to our roster. This just gives us flexibility to be able to do certain things um, in the game now I'm not going to be I'm not going to be taking mechs all the time and then just like assembling them and salvaging them this is going to be based on missions and things like that what we end up taking is salvage but this gives us the flexibility to be able to add mechs as we're going along now the company type uh, we've got one running as the clans and the second one is going to be running as Kurita now I noticed in here it's pretty cool. They've got a lot of different setups. Now they got lamps. They got a lamp start. Um, they've got Irby start down here somewhere. Primitive clan, primitive tank, primitive max, um, inner sphere tanks. Uh, yeah, there's the Irbys. VTOL. You can have a VTOL start. Uh, Word of Blake. So they've got a lot of interesting uh, starting um, selections here, which I think is pretty darn cool. Uh, com guards, like all the normal ones are here. Battle armor platoon, if you want to start off that way. So yeah, pretty darn cool. Gives you lots of different play styles. But like I said, for this playthrough, um, we're going to be running clans in Karita. Now we may add, uh, like I said, um, we may be adding other um, lances later on, which I may like start over. Um, by taking another like selection down here so we may we may take like if we pick up a vehicle unit or whatever uh, we might start off with primitive tanks or inner sphere tanks something like that or if we you know end up with battle battle armor platoon I think some of that would be kind of cool later on down the road but for now those are the two that we're going to be running with uh, friendly fires all on mech recovery chance 70% only because I want to um, limit disasters early on that's the only reason for it uh, I'll probably change this later in game but for now it's where it's going to sit uh, contract variable uh, uh, variance difficulty will be one I want to stick to uh, staying as close to like uh, the contract value of the planet that I'll be traveling to um, and that's why I went this route that way I can sort of manually up or lower the difficulty by just traveling to a different planet. Now we're always going to be in the same system in game, but um, as far as each individual lance goes, in order to be able to get what I need out of them, we have to travel to different planets, like on the regular map board. So um, leaving the contract variance here 
gives me the ability to control the, like the level of the contract. So that's why I'm going with one rather than a whole bunch. I might change that later on, but for now I'm going to keep it tight uh, to where we want to have it for difficulty. Uh, contract payment, normal, sal salvage normal. I can increase the con. I mean, if we're running into C-bill issues, um, like I said, C-bills aren't the major focus of this game. Um, uh, it's going to be the actual combat. So if we need to increase contract payment to be able to stay afloat, I will do that. But for now, I'm going to leave it normal. Uh, same as salvage normal. Advanced mech warriors are very rare. So we're not we're rarely going to be able to find advanced pilots. The commander experience points, 10,000. It's the max. That's I always start that way because I think the commander should have more experience. Uh, pilots per system, 5. Um, run and hiring chance is 10%. Usually I turn this off, but I put the 10% just in case we want to pick up that odd character, you know, in-game. Um, this gives us the ability to do that if we find somebody interesting or something like that. MechWarrior progression is slow. Exponent and multiplier stay at normal. This will allow us to gain experience exactly the same we've been, way we've been doing in the past series. I did test this out just to make sure I was I got it right. Um, so we, we should be getting the exact same experience that we've been getting in previous series. So that's where that stays. Lethality is normal. Starting money. Now I cranked this up to the top for both playthroughs. Um, just because I wanted to be able to get the lances outfitted how I wanted them. Um, gives us the option to buy a couple things in store to get them in the stores to get them to where I wanted them. Um, also, I needed to bring my clan um, start from the clan space all the way down into the inner sphere. So we needed the sea bills for that. So that's kind of why I put the, crank the starting money up. Um, as you'll see, I mean, it, like we're already in our clan start, we're already behind uh, um, for our financial report. So uh, it was a good thing I cranked that up. Uh, mech base speeds, uh, normal. Mech base armor, normal. C bills normal and I left like I left all these on regular values so that's, that was the starting for this and then let's just start the game and I'll show you what I chose settings wise for each of the the uh, two pilot, the main pilot starts okay now for character starts um, the origins uh, the abilities for the origins here well, I'll show you here have changed uh, they've added a, added a few things which is kind of cool so uh, for our clan start the even though we're leading a fleaborn or fleaborn a freeborn unit, the initial commander is a trueborn pilot, um, so he can't command tanks, but he gets plus one to all his skills, which is kind of cool. Uh, for the Karita start, it was just obviously Draconis Combine Karita for piloting and tactics. Uh, interests have always been um, so we've got history, space, tech, things like that, right? So tech um, gives you the um, the Quirk Tech and Comstar, which is great for uh, repair. Um, space is like space and honest. So you get each each uh, one gives you um, something a little different, right? Brave and Assassin. So for our main guy, I chose Tech. And I believe for our second guy, it's been a week since I, I recorded <laughs> or I got the, the two lances up and running. So I think it was, no, it wasn't history. I think it was space for the second guy. And then um, uh, choosing your career. Now things change slightly down here. Um, there's a lot of different choices down here. Uh, and I see they've added test pilots since the last time I checked. Uh, random hatchetman, that's kind of cool. Um, so there was veteran, which is our Karita pilot. Now he got a random bushwhacker to start. So we got a, a bushwhacker in that lance. Now, when you get your mech or whatever um, you get for your different selection here, that doesn't happen until you actually advance from turn one. Uh, then it'll show up. It shows up and is an event on the very first day. So when you start, don't be surprised that you don't see it in your mech bay. Um, once you hit uh, go, or you advance the day to the next day, the event happens and you get your, your mech or whatever it was you got. So, uh, like I said, for the Karita start, it was the random bushwhacker. And then for... Uh, so, there's, I mean, there's a few good choices here, right? Freelancer gets a hunchback. Uh, Gladiator gets random specialist items, which is kind of cool. Uh, mercenary, you get a random advanced unit. Uh, you get uh, athletic and mech warrior as your quirk. 
uh, merchant, test pilot, corsair, officer. Each one's slightly different. Now I chose merchant as my um, trueborn start only because you get an extra three million starting money, and I knew I had to come from clan space. Uh, into the inner sphere and that's a long journey it cost us I think it was the flight was 2.5 million or 3 million something like that just to get to the inner sphere and then we had all the financial reports to go through too so it was a big deal to get from clan space to, to the inner inner sphere to be able to get just get the start going which is why we almost have no sea bills to start uh, that plus I bought a few things and adjusted the mech slightly. Um, so yeah, that's what I did for this one. That extra three million, you know, starting off with almost ten million was good because it, I mean it got us to the inner sphere and got us set up and ready to go. Okay, so let's get let's just go ahead and jump in and I'll show you what the two lances look like. Okay, so let's have a look at our Karita unit first. Now our Karita unit, we're calling them the Dragon's Rejects. Um, Basically, like, as I said earlier, these guys are um, uh, bondsmen uh, that were taken from um, uh, Korea in space, and they were working for the clans, and now they really don't really have a home to go back to, which is why they, they stayed um, with the uh, uh, Smoke Jaguar um, defectors. So, uh, well, not defectors, but mutineers. Um, so let's have a look at them to start. Now, let's go into the barracks first. And we'll have a look at our pilots. So we've only got five pilots here. I flushed out the rest of them only because uh, I want to start off with five only um, for kind of both both uh, series. So we've got uh, Raider, Retriever, Skull, Taskmaster, and Tiger Tail. Now Taskmaster uh, is our leader, um, and it's. The new um, system here, basically, when you choose one of your skills here, you have an option to choose um, one of two things. So, for instance, Focus Fire uh, is one of the two choices for gunnery. One uh, gives you a better chance, like, as I've got here, for improved call shot modifier. The other one gives you better clustering modifier. So if you've got a missile pilot, you would go ahead and choose the clustering mo uh, modifier and if you've got like a direct fire pilot you kinda wanna go to go improve called shot modifier um, and minus one recoil but so each one of these has got a, a pair of options so in this case you know she's gone for improved called shot so so she can pilot both a uh, uh, mech and a vehicle uh, tiger tail can um, pilot both as well now I tried to go with the pilots that were going to give us kind of the best uh, overall abilities here. Now technician was one uh, really high up on my list. The extra mech techs are going to make a difference, I think, in this series, uh, getting mechs um, repaired and back into battle quickly. So we got mech tech on her. Uh, aye, aye. So with uh, let's have a look at taskmaster here. We've got honest, Karita ancestry, lucky, military, and spacer. Um, Skull uh, started off with um, with the melee damage or the melee uh, tree here in guts, so minus 10% stability damage taken, which is kind of nice. Um, so we can either use her as a stable fire platform, uh, like close-in fire platform, um, or a melee mech, one or the other. Uh, but uh, her service record, we have it up here. Can we see it? Come on. Not going to give it to me. Okay, service record. Uh, brave, military, periphery, and rebellious. Waiting for order. So we got Retriever here. It's got four, almost fours across the board. Um, Mech Warrior, Nobility, Periphery, Torian, and Wealthy. Now this dude doesn't cost very much, which is one of the reasons why I kept him. Um, so yeah, and then Raider oh, here at the end. Uh, pretty good skills across the board to start. Uh, military, Periphery, and Spacer. So... Um, those are our pilots. Now we we've, we've been um, around for 91 days, so we did get a bit of experience to start, which is why they've got a little bit down here already, still left over. So I tried to raise up their skills from any twos that they had to try and get them all closest to four as I could. 
Um, so that's what I did with these guys. And then Mech Bay here. Here's what we started off with. Um, we also had um, a flea in here, 15 ton flea, which I which I got rid of. Actually, it's in storage, I think. Oh, sorry, we had a Clint. And I, I think I got rid of the flea. Yeah, I got I, I, I trashed the flea. We had a Clint in here, but we got we since we chose the bushwhacker, we got an extra mech, so we had six instead of five. That's what it was. So I got rid of the flea because I don't really want the 15 tonner. The Clint is in storage right now because we do have vehicles that we're going to be using. So that's you're just going to stay in storage like that. And then um, so we've got a bushwhacker here. It's, we're going to go through each of the mechs. Uh, I've cho chosen kind of a, a Karita Karita esque color scheme with these guys as best I could. So let's have a look at this guy. So we've got an AC-10 uh, Midrin on this side. Uh, plus one accuracy, evasion, pips ignored, things like that. And three LRM Zeuses with Magpulse ammo. And one ton of AC-10 ammo, which is like, what, 10 shots? So it's not bad. Um, and I think, and he's got two medium pulse lasers in the CT. Now, um, I did make, I think, a couple of minor adjustments. The Clint did have a fire control system ballistic on it because it had an AC-5 on it. So I put that on here. I bought a Bolton AMS and an IFF jammer. Dropped those in here. I tried to get as much as in as I could that I could find in the stores and drop on. So that's what I did with this guy. And then we've got a trebuchet, which is, I think... Oh yeah, this one is actually really good. I was actually kind of shocked and loaded with this. So we've got a pair of MRM-20s and... A ton of improved ammo, which is basically five shots with the MRM-20s. And then a double ton. Well, we had two single tons, but I, I managed to find a double ton in the store that I bought and dropped in. So it gives us a few extra rounds. Uh, so that that's a bit, bit better. And then a uh, medium laser and two medium pulse lasers, which is actually a pretty good loadout for this thing. Now I did... What did I do? I took some stuff off. Did I not? Or did I leave it? I think the armor may have been this way when we got it. I can't remember if this thing had jump jets or not. I think it did. I pulled the jump jets off and up the armor. Like a lot of these mechs are, like starting mechs can be skimpy on armor. So I have a tendency to pull jump jets off and put armor on. Then we got a wolfhound here. We ended up with a bit of an issue with the wolfhound because heat problems. But I, so I managed to find a heat bank in the store, which I dropped in, which will help out a little bit. Uh, Advanced Zoom Mark 1, I think was already on here. Can't remember if we bought that or not, but we put it on here. If we did, we put it on. Uh, so we got our medium X pulse, two ER mediums, and an ER large, uh, and a Guardian ECM. It's got a pro proto laser AMS in the torso here, which is kind of cool. Uh, heat sink, heat efficiency is not that great, but we want to be firing everything at the same time, so um, we can just cycle ER large on and off. I think to to deal with heat for now until we can find uh, uh, um, a. Uh, what do you call it? Um, exchanger, which we can drop on here. So that's the Wolfhound. It's got pretty good armor as well. And then the Hitman. Uh, what did I do with this guy? Oh yeah, this guy didn't really change. We got three ER medium lasers on one side. I, I think I it was I pulled the jump jets off it to max out the armor. I think that's what I did. Beagle probe, Guardian ECM, a mask. C3 unit. So this guy is like our scout, basically. Um, oh yeah, I, I, I added a couple of bolt-on rockets, a 10 and a 15. That's what I did to add this guy a little bit extra one-shot punch. So if we need to, if we can get behind somebody and, and launch all these at one time, we can do some pretty good damage, I think. Uh, the next thing for this is to get a double heat sink kit. The, the heat, heat efficiency is actually pretty good, um, as if we're not firing these guys. But uh, yeah, so it's actually it's not that bad. Um, the loadouts for these now. I haven't been able to find a way to be able to look at the vehicles in the bay here. Um, I think they're still working on that because you can't actually update, like up, like upgrade the vehicles. Now, when I first loaded in, I was like, oh, okay, I got it all mixed out. I didn't get any vehicles. So I went ahead and, and I bought a, um, I ended up buying a Hetzer with an AC-20. And I was like, oh, it didn't show up in the mech bay. What the heck's going on? And then I was worried that I spent the money for nothing. But if you go to the command center um, and you go ahead and negotiate, I'm just going to do this real quick so I can show you here and accept. The vehicles do show up up here. So we had a galleon. Um, 
so they do show up up here so here's the headset that we have uh, it's got double load of AC20 ammo uh, it's got AC20 precision AC20 incendiary um, and of course an AC20 and it has okay armor the armor is actually not that bad on it front 150 left right and rear all one all 110 so it should do okay um, so you just go to Lance 2 and this is where your vehicles drop in here on the second Lance uh, so we can drop four mechs and two vehicles, which is actually what it, officially what a standard Leopard drop is. Um, with the Leopard, Clan Leopard is actually meant to carry five mechs and no vehicles. Um, but an Intersphere Leopard is four, is four mechs and two vehicles. So we can actually do that. If we get another pilot um, that can pilot vehicles, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and uh, get the Galleon running too. But for now, we're going to drop... Uh, four plus the Hetzer. Uh, so that's what we're going to do to start with. All right. So that's it for these guys. Let's just jump over now quickly to, and see what our um, our uh, clan start is like. All right. Now for our clan start, uh, the Lance's name is the Night Gaunts. And we're going to have a look, quick look here at the uh, barracks real quick. Uh, now I do have six pilots in here. Uh, I've got one as an extra just in case. Uh, we do have a couple that have the ability to pilot vehicles. I wanted to hang on to these two. Um, well, we got three of them here, but I wanted to hang on to them just in case we pick up some vehicles early in the game. Um, but the reason why I kept an extra one in this Lance is because Gatekeeper technically didn't start with this Lance. Now, he is um, the... Um, uh, True blo uh, the uh, Trueborn uh, warrior that came over to this uh, unit. So he's technically in charge of them, but he wasn't really in charge. Uh, Blade was the original leader of the, of the unit, uh, and Gatekeeper has now taken over. So there's the five of them plus him makes six. So that's the reason why there's an extra pilot in this lance. Um, so Gatekeeper is taking command. Now, uh, we've got two skills up. We've got Tactician up, which gives him bonus to sensors. And of course, he's got the uh, called shot modifier. And then for Blade, he's pretty much the opposite. Um, he removes one bar of stability damage when he's reserving because he's cautious. Um, but he also gets a, a, a bonus to um, critical stri strike and uh, cluster ring roll modif modifiers. So he's kind of the opposite of Gatekeeper. Um, and then we've got, well, let's just have a look here. Service record for him. Athletic command experience, because it was obviously the, uh, the commander. Uh, federal, high spirits. Inner sphere doesn't really count, but uh, lucky officer, nobility, and military. So he was the commander before um, Gatekeeper showed up. Now, Gatekeeper's service record has got uh, assassin, brave, deep periphery, ancestry, um, dishonest, and merchant ability. Uh, Waiting for orders. Giant. Um, We've got command experience, federal, inner sphere, and military. Uh, Marlin, dependable, merchant, and periphery. Stand and buy. Uh, Rose, we got Oregon, honest, periphery, and technician. I kept her because of the technician. Receiving you. Um, and slingshot, we got Canopian, periphery, and technician. So, those are our pilots. He also started off pretty advanced here. Um, so go back to skills real quick. He's got. Um, Ev evasion pips are immune to sensor lock. So I'll most likely make this guy our scout pilot. And then the rest, these two will be vehicles. Um, now we don't have any vehicles with the clan start. Uh, so we just have five mechs to start. So let's go to the mech bay. Nice to see you down here in the hole. So the first thing you'll notice is the Kit Fox is actually underweight here. Now I went ahead and I did a major change to these guys because I had a long time to spend. We had to go from, let's have a quick look at the navigation here. So we're right here on the edge of, uh, of uh, Dracona Convoy Space. Both of our lances are actually at the same planet right now. Uh, but we had to start way back here and travel all this distance to be able to get to the Inner Sphere. Uh, the reason why I decided to start here is if I was in Clan Space, then we'd be facing the Clans all the time. But because we're on Astrakhazi, which is the opposite side, it's right over... Has that already been taken by somebody? It's right here. Yeah. Anyways, that's where that's the planet that we are technically on, um, right? Comstar presence, moderate population, moons, planet-wide storms, poor 
mining, right? That's where we're technically at, but we had to be in the Indosphere to be able to at least get some op opposition that's sort of uh, comparable to what's actually on the planet, right? So let's have a look at the mechs real quick. So most of these mechs, not most of them, but a lot of them have been adjusted. So the main mech is the Griffin 2C, and uh, that's our command mech. Now, I, we've got a bolt-on AMS and advanced optics Mark III. Um, I think I started with the bolt, I think I bought the bolt-on AMS, but I think the advanced optics was actually on here already. Or I may have bought this, I can't remember. I bought a few things anyway. You'll notice there's a few items in here I picked up on the way in. So we originally started off with four LRM-5s on here, but that's not enough of a punch for this mech. So I pulled them off, switched them over to at Clan SRMs, which I pulled off some of the other mechs and I bought one. Uh, we got a small uh, X-Pulse and two ER small lasers and a light Clan tag on here with the armor pretty much maxed out. Um, so this I think is pretty good for a, a command mech. It should be heavy hitting close in. Um, because it's relatively lighter, it's pretty fast. So I'm hoping it does well. Uh, so that's the Griffin. And then the Hussar, we haven't changed at all. It stayed the same. So it's really, really fast with an ER large. This is our scout mech, Beagle Probe and Guardian ECM. It's an old SLDF mech. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a good second line, uh, second line mech. Then the Kit Fox, we changed a bit. Now we're underweight with this guy. Once I get some more stuff, we'll be able to figure it out. Now it started off with an Ultra 10. It had one ton of ammo. Was it one ton or two tons? I can't remember if it started off with two. I think it started off with one and I bought a ton. A pair of ER, uh, or ER medium, ER small on this arm. Now I did some uh, rejigging of stuff on here to be able to increase the armor because it had like, no, I had like 30 points or 25 points in the arms. And that's just not going to cut it for this mech, especially with the Ultra 10. So I had to do a lot of work on this guy to get this guy, uh, get the, get this guy's armors up, armor up. I think it had jump jets, which I pulled off. I'm pretty sure that's it. But yeah, it was a lot of work to get this to where it is now. Now we're going to definitely be working on it later on. Uh, we'll be adding another half a ton something on here. I mean, I could just add a flamer, but I'm not, I'm, this guy's generally a medium range mech. I don't want him to be too close because he'll get killed. Um, but that's pretty much the, what the Kit Fox is right now. It's not 100%, but it will be there. Uh, Miss Links. Um, this is where all the LRMs ended up. So I put them back on the Miss Links here. So this is our long range guy. Left a couple of jump jets on it just so it can get to a higher position if we need to get him up higher. Uh, I bought a ton of LK ammo, which I dropped in here regular ammo. It's got two ER medium lasers as backup, but its primary is the four LRM-5s for long range fighting. And because it's such, it's a lighter mech, I mean, it's actually got more armor than the Mislinks, but um, it's a lighter mech, but we can put him behind stuff and just have it, him fire over. And then if things get hairy, we can have him close with the ER mediums and stuff to do some damage. But because these are clan LRM-5s, we don't suffer from the uh, range and accuracy at close range. So we can actually close and not have to worry about that. So that's the mislinks and then the mongoose here at the end. Have a quick look at this guy. So this guy's got a pair of ER mediums and an ER large. Um, it's not that bad for a, uh, a light mech. So this guy's going to be one of our scouts again. Uh, it does have a Beagle active probe on it to, to uh, suss out the enemy. But we do have to be careful because this guy's not an Omni, Omni mech, right? We can lose the XL. So we got to be very, very careful with this guy. But if, you know, we, if it runs into a problem, I mean, it's got good armor for its weight, but if it runs into a problem, it can just stand back and fire the ER large from a long range, and I don't have to worry too much about that. So, uh, that this is the Lance that we're definitely going to want to get some upgrades to sooner rather than later. Um, I do like the loadout of our Karita Lance slightly over this one. I think the Karita Lance might have a bit more firepower, um, but for mobility and range, this, this Lance is definitely better. So yeah, that's the lances, um, and let's move on. All right, well, welcome to Astrometrics. So here is a look at the Astrokazi system. As you can see, there's a uh, sort of M-class main sequence star. We've got seven planets and two available moons. Now there are other moons, but any other moons are just too small to have anything basically on them. 
So the first planet, Astrakhazy 1, they basically uh, uh, labeled them Astrakhazy 1 to Astrakhazy 7. So Astrakhazy 1 is basically a moon-like world, no atmosphere. Astrakhazy 2 has got a, uh, several rings around it, but it's more of a radiated world. Astrakhazy 3, or what's commonly known as Astrakhazy, since that's just where the bulk of the population is. It's primarily a desert slash barren world. It's got a lot of inland oceans and seas with life um, and sort of more temperate uh, zones around those, but everywhere else is pretty much dry and barren. And it's got a, its own moon, which is basically Astrakhazy uh, 3b, and that's just basically our lunar environment. Then we've got Astrakhazy 4, which looks like an Earth-like world, and this is where the, the bulk of the human population was when this uh, system was first settled. However, due to mutated organisms and stuff on the planet, it basically created a disease that wiped out all the human population, and those that tried to flee or get off the planet were... Uh, basically contained and forced to stay because the virus was so uh, deadly that if it spread beyond the planet it would cause major issues. So there are cities and things on this planet but the atmosphere is definitely unbreathable and the cities are now long since abandoned. Astrakhazy 5 is a gas giant and it does have a smaller moon uh, that does circle it that's uh, relatively Earth-like. The atmosphere is non-breathable um, and it does have a lot of hostile organisms on it, so no real development was ever done on that planet. Then Astrakhazy 6 is basically an ice world, and then Astrakhazy 7, once again, is a radiated planet. It's also freezing. It's out in the far reaches of the solar system. So those are the basic planets. Now, we're, most of the battles will be fo for, uh, focused on Astrakhazy 3, but as you can see from the system, this gives us opportunity to basically take any environment from any planet that we you know, we jump to and apply it to this actual system. So wherever we go, we'll have, you know, it doesn't matter where the battles take place, we can actually slot them in on planets on this system and move the storyline forward. So that's what we're intending on doing. Now, uh, let's jump over to Darius uh, because we're going to go ahead and um, select a mission for today. All right, so here we are in the compact ready room. Uh, Darius is is still our uh, number one guy when it comes to CNC and ops when we're on the ground uh, in missions and stuff. So as you can see, we've got uh, the main planet Astrakhazy here with four different possibilities for uh, locations. Uh, basically, what we want to do when we first start now is, is uh, get in contact with the warlords on the planet, um, try to start making some allies and getting a better idea what the layout of the planet's like. We want to start looking for any potential areas uh, that the uh, old Star League facility or facilities may be in. So in order to do that, it's try and make some friends. Well, I'm sure we'll make a few enemies uh, while we're on the planet. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and jump into our first mission. All right, so shortly after jumping into the Astrakhazy system, um, we used our Odyssey jump ship that we had taken from when we uh, deserted from Clan Smoke Jaguar. We took the Odyssey jump ship uh, a couple of drop ships and um, an Argo vessel which is used for in-system supply. We took we stole those and we arrived here at Astrakhazy. Now we're on the Astra like on Astrakhazy itself, Astrakhazy 3. Um, what we've done is we've sent down a few people, did a little bit of spying, a little bit of research, and we've discovered that there's several banded factions, some warlord factions and stuff all over the planet. So we've decided to uh, target one of the weaker ones and take their base as a temporary ground installation. So that's what we're doing today. Um, we basically took this part of their fortifications here, but they've got a heavier fortified area up here with a lot of turrets and, and buildings, and they're, they're really, really dug in up here. So we're going to have to kind of move our way up, destroy the building, destroy the turrets and any, any mechs or any opposing enemies that are in our way. Now we're using... Um, we're using the Dragon's Rejects because we don't want to tip our hand with our clan units uh, engaging enemies at this point. Uh, our clan units right now we're going to be using to um, explore the surface, any areas that we see as possible locations for um, a uh, old Star League facility. We're going to be scouting those out using uh, using the clan units at first. So we're going to take the cur the uh, the uh, Dragon's Rejects into this area. Now we've got to be careful. There's there's so supposedly gun emplacements up here that we got to be careful of. And it looks like we've got 
yeah we got enemy mechs down here that we got to deal with so let's go ahead and do that so we got taskmaster in the bushwhacker here um We've got uh, Retriever is in the Wolfhound, Raider is in the uh, Trebuchet. We've got Skull in the Hitman, and then in Lance 2, we got Tiger Tail running the Hetzer. So let's go ahead and move up. Uh, I don't want to tip our hand too much here until we get close enough. i got to determine if they've got any artillery. So we're going to move up and not engage right away. Yeah. Alright, Skull. Um, you're our scout mech. We've got to get you a little closer. Yes, Commander. Alright, you are the heavy firepower. And you are fire support. Let's move. I definitely want to lose the loadout on this uh, bushwhacker with these three uh, LRM fives and the AC ten. But we're gonna have to figure out once we get some more gear, we'll figure out what we're gonna do. All right, they're not moving at all. I guess not. Let's keep you up with the max as best we can. Moving. Vehicles have a really crappy movement, especially wheeled vehicles through the uh, trees and stuff, so we'll have to be, be aware of that. Alright, so it doesn't look like we've got any contacts now. Heading out. Let me go full speed. We're going to head right this way, I think. Alright, looks like we got sight on the building, so we're going to move forward to Wolfhound and do that. And this is full sprint, day eh, for the uh, Hitman? Alright. Heading out. Keep our heavy fire support up here. So I'm hoping we this is a supply installation uh, that they have supplies that is that got we can it. go ahead and uh, steal some of. Oh, looks like we got Copy that. sight on. Let's see if we can get fairly close as fast as we can here to try and get some guns on. All right, what do we got here? A wasp, a clint. All right, looks like we're in combat. Good to go. Good to go. Supposedly they're supposed to have turrets, but maybe they don't. Uh, I want to close, I think. On the move. Full speed. Okay, they do have turrets here. Light harpoon, couple of ballistics. Urban mech turret. Um, Urban Mac Missile Turret and a Quick Cell Defense Turret. All right. That's probably a kill shot in this Wasp. Let's go ahead. We're going to go full out, I think, on this one. It's going to overheat us a bit, but I think we'll be okay. I think that's the primary weapon gone. Knocked down. Surprise, motherfucker! Gonna make you regret that. Yep. All right, Taskmaster. Copy that. Let's get up on the hill up here a little bit. Get a bit of height advantage. Let's fire suppress this Clint a little bit, I think. Oof. What has he got? Two mediums, SRM-6 pirate, eh? And a fluid gun. Interesting. Could be a melee mech if he's got medium pirate medium lasers. Um, let's leave this off. Let's go up to the CT of this guy. Is he bailing? Nope. I don't know if the MRMs are in range. They might be. They might be. 
They are. Alright, we got lots of ammo. I'm not worried about using it. Uh, let's just go with the regular on this guy. I know it's lower chance to hit, but we're not going to do very much damage anyway. Looks like he's using a panther chassis. Interesting. Yeah. I got it. Don't think. Don't shoot. Just run. No, we need all three of the above, please. All three of the above. Leave the narc launcher off. Here you go. There you go. All right. So it looks like they've only got three I units. Got so they're down to two max now. All right, let's get this Hetzer up there. What's up, boss? Hetzer gonna Hetz. Still out of range, though. That's all right. Be in range soon enough. One thing I gotta say about low level is uh, our bad chances to hit are also their bad chances to hit. What do you need? So I feel good about that. Acknowledge. Let's close the gap a little bit with this guy. Get those pulse lasers into battle. Yeah, not a lot. Although we got the mag pulse on him, so impairing his sensors a little bit helps out. Let's move. Let's uh, snuggle the Clint in here, or the uh, Wolfhound that is. Let's get on this harpoon turret. Can leave the X pulse. Whoa, that's a really lot. Of, that's a lot of heat. Let's go with the two mediums for now, I guess. All right, got one hit on the turret. Not bad. To start. Standing by. Falling ass. Get those missiles in here. Oof, really. Leave that one off. Save a little bit of heat here. Copy that. Okay, we made him almost unstable. But it is his turn. Wow, it's bizarre that he can actually see me to shoot me, but I couldn't see him. He didn't even move. I'm listening. Full speed sounds good. Mm-hmm. Alright, see if we can get the narc on this guy. 48% with the rockets, but I think I want to save them for the turrets, or do we? No, we got they're incendiary rockets. He's he, he's heating up now. Let's see if we can overheat him. Come on. Look at that. I'm did you? Nope, he did not. Yes, now he's standing in fire, too. Okay, that could be bad. Damage minimal. Commander. If you want to fire that, we'll fire this. Standard ammo, 16%. Here it comes. I copy. Yeah. We got a crap ton of ammo for this thing anyway, so... Should be good. I gotta be careful. I think those are light... Oh, they did hit. I think those are light, um... Light PPCs. Or light, uh, Gauss Rifles. So 50 damage. But still, that's a, yeah. that's a, that's a heavy hit, you know? We gotta be careful. 
Um, I think we want to sprint this. I think we want to sprint it. Let's get on this guy, see if we can knock his ass over. I don't think he liked that very much. Well, he is a pirate, so... Oh, you just committed yourself. Oh, see ya! Somebody had dead fire ammo that just exploded. <laughs> What's up, Commander? Move order received. Make my day. Boom. How does 50 dead fire exploding in your torso make your day? Oof. God, the heat. Well, that'll do more damage. I'll go with these two. Ooh, nice. Let's get on this turret. Get on this turret. Oof! Mm -hmm. What are you shooting at? Incoming air air attack? Roger that. This guy wants to shoot at you. You can shoot right back at him. Oh man, this guy's in trouble. It's loaded out. Him everything I've got. Oh, it's a cattle master. Correction, it was a cattle master. <laughs> I think the MRMs are rapidly becoming my my favorite weapon. I think of every series I get like this favorite weapon. The last one, it was close between the MRMs and the uh, medium X pulses. I think that I think the uh, MRMs are rapidly becoming my favorite weapon though. I think it's the best best balance of firepower and weight. Pretty much everything, I think. Uh, yeah. Confirmed. We really do need to fix the loadout on that bushwhacker. We really do. Alright, same two. Oof, really? Enemy structure is weakening. Well, at least we hit something. All right, we should be able to hit that uh, second turret with the M or with the MRMs up here. Well, maybe not, but we're still going to fire at it. Ah, a few points. Commander. We had to kind of do it anyway. All right, see if we can finish this turret up. I think we probably can. Oh, close. Maybe not. All right. Orders. Full speed sounds good. Uh huh. Yeah. Makes me wish this Hetzer had a light Goss rifle now. <laughs> uh. Ow. All right, what do we got going on? We got you happening. Don't miss this time. Okay, should be a little cooler because we just walked. Let's just fire at this guy. I copy. God damn it, man. Okay, we got it. That turret is gone. Right here. Mm -hmm. That turret's fucking gone. Uh, we don't see, we see one other turret from here, but let's go after this guy. Confirmed. Let's go after this guy. No guts, no glory. Okay, all three hit, and the narc missed. Alright. What do you need? That's all right. we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Going full throttle. Alright. 
Here it comes. Nice. One less turret. Yes, Commander. All right, time to dig out some ticks. These guys ain't leaving. We'll force them to leave. So they adjusted the uh, how much damage some of the buildings can take. I guess they changed some of that in the cities and stuff. Just go. Now let's just cut our heat down. I'm just going to fire the two MRMs. Structure down. It's let's try and keep this reactor back here intact if we can. I'd like you to fire more than once today if it's possible. Well, it doesn't look like we can go very far here. Acknowledged. Trebuchet is going to block you. It's fine. Stay right there. Ooh. Okay. It's not very nice. That one was a bad one right there. That's not very nice. What can I do you for? It's always been five bucks. I don't know why you uh, keep asking. Alright. What do we got on this guy? That's pretty good chances to hit. This is the guy that was causing us the problem. Uh, let's not go over, but let's just do this. Nicely done. Good damage. The guy's got a lot of armor, though. Yeah. Uh, let's shoot at the large building. Alright, let's just stay away from the turrets. I'm on my way. Put some damage into this building. Affirmative. Commander. Alright, full sprint. On my way. Double time. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna clear this building out of our way. Oh man, this trebuchet. One less structure. Out of SRM. Wow, it just does not like this terrain at all. Copy that. Yeah, that Hetzer is going to be limited in use, that's for sure. Alright, let's get to a position where only one turret can shoot at this guy. We've got the AMS on him too, so hopefully it helps out a little bit here. But we are going to fire everything. Ah, uh, we better not. We don't want to overheat. Excellent damage. Okay, we're not going to target that large building because that will reveal us to this other turret, but we will shoot this turret this turn. Here we go. Not quite enough, eh? Okay. Aye, aye. Ooh, okay, we can see the other turret. Can we see it from here, though? We can. Beautiful. Confirmed. Finally getting into battle. Alright. Got standard ammo left for this thing. Let's go all out, see if we can take it down. Okay, well. What do you need? Copy that. Alright, there goes that one. Rot it down, Commander. Screams of their infantry on the Send inside the there. I don't want to shoot that building at the back. Oh, AC-10.
Ooh, damn it. I got me a situation here. Yeah. Order. We all seem to have a situation here. Coordinates received. You gotta make that turret gone. Oh man, really? Target's taking a critical hit. Commander. Confirmed. That'll do it. Turret destroyed. Alright, let's get this last turret. Uh you're just gonna reserve, I think. Reserving action. Moving Hopefully Raider can can kill this turret. Targeting for an Smoked one. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, time to finish this up. Here we go. Get to the to the LZ commander. I'm coming in hot. There it is, folks. We now have a base on the ground. Let's see what we get in the stores here. All right, so not bad. We we did find a bit of money down here. Not a lot, but a little bit. And our hitman took a bit of damage, so we're going to have to get that repaired. Um, it's one thing we're going to have to look at. The lower leg was damaged. To double check into that. Now, not a lot of stuff left on the ground here. So we're going to have to see what we want to keep. That's a lot of items we can take. AC-10 BB-5X. 8 jam multiplier. Recoil of 3. Um, okay. I guess it's just a cheap-ass AC-10, huh? Alright. Pirate medium laser. Let's take that. We are going to want to build some melee stuff. Heat bank double plus. Heavy industrial armor. That's kind of cool. Three times the carrying capacity. So the uh, maximum carry weight is what the mech can hold um, in its three upper slots. So hatchets, shields, things like that. So if we do make a melee mech, this will come in handy, especially if it's lighter. So we'll take that. Searchlight is actually kind of cool. It's only one ton, um, but it gives you one extra sensor detection with 120 meters. So we're going to take that. Spiked fist. Spiked helmet. Uh, double AC-10 ammo we'll take. Ammo harpoon. We don't have any harpoons up there. Uh, standard SRM ammo, or LRM ammo. We've got one kicking around, so we don't need it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I want here. If we get any mech parts, that's great, but we should get a lot of other stuff after this. Alright, we got, oh yeah, we got almost got everything. Alright, so we'll hang on to this, I guess, for now. Doesn't sell for much. Bolt-on incendiary rockets. We can just go ahead and sell these, because we've got no use for those. That can go, let's ditch the core, primitive, heat sinks can go, we have a whole bunch of them, so those can go, primitive cockpit can go, sensors can go, primitive sensors can go, spiked helmet of course we'll hang on to, standard fusion core, uh, let's just hang on to it in case we get an older mech, no let's just sell it. Uh, harpoon can go. We'll keep the ammo. I don't know if we'll get into. I don't know if we're going to get into SRM builds, or not SRM. I mean uh, machine gun builds. But we'll hang on to it because we may with lighter max and vehicles and stuff. So we may want to switch some stuff out later on. All right. So let's just keep that. All right. So the next mission we're going to have to do is uh, consolidate all of the equipment that we've just sort of taken. Um, We've managed to get a few installations on the ground that this uh, sort of banded warlord had uh, 
um, had sort of dominion over. So we're going to have to go clean up any forces that are left around the area. We're going to uh, um, get some defenses down on the base and uh, see what we can do down there. Um, We'll go out to any outlying buildings, grab any supplies and gear that they have, bring them all back to the main base and consolidate there. All right, so I am going to end this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was the first one. It's probably going to be a little disjointed because I had to record everything in different pieces, but it'll get better as it goes along. Um, if you enjoyed the, uh, the uh, video, please drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. Also, drop any comments in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and everything. I'm also interested in what you think about the series, so drop any comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.